Hi there, today we're unboxing a smart LED floodlight. So this particular one is by Nova Stella. Details are in the description below for anyone thinking of purchasing. So let's take a quick look around the packaging. So it comes in a medium sized box detailing that it's a two pack coming around this way. So just showing the fact that LED light bulbs come into these performance levels. So A, A plus and A plus plus. It's dimmable, angle is 120 degrees, Working temperature is 40 degrees to minus 25 degrees. Starting time is less than 500 milliseconds and warm up to 90% in less than a second. On off greater than 25,000 and just highlighting the fact that lamps cannot be changed. Turning around the back there, just stating that it works with Alexa and Google Assistant. Turning around here, some details here. So model number there, the fact it's a two pack. Wattage is 20 watts. Color is RGB CW. Input voltage is 100 to 240 volts. Waterproof rating is IP66. Frequency is 50 to 60 hertz. And life expectancy is 50,000 hours. Mercury content, there's none. And dimensions there and energy cost. So let's open it up and see what you get in the packaging. Okay, so I've laid out all the items you get in the packaging. So let me quickly go through them one by one. Initially, you've got a user guide, and this is multi-language, just highlighting how to install an app installation on there. Next, we have a thank you card with support details and social media details there. Coming around the back, a QR code relating to extending your warranty an extra six months. Then we have the two smart LED floodlights. And if I grab one of them, just to show nice heavy duty feel to there, and Glass on the top, obviously protecting the LEDs behind here. Got the branding there, Nova Stella, 20 watt IP66 rated. All strong metal all the way around. You've got some adjusting points there. So if I now pull this down, just helps in installation. Just over here, we've got a Wi-Fi aerial. So if I take that off, the Wi-Fi aerial is installed at the top. There's a connection point here, just looking at this and it just screws directly on very short in length it's not adjustable in any way in terms of dimensions of the floodlight so we've got 15 centimeters going there 10 centimeters there and depth wise it's about three centimeters cable length on there you've got 1.2 meters it comes with a fused plug on there just to note so uk standard on there and from first impressions, build quality of this feels very good. Let's make a start at setting up this LED floodlight. So I'm at my Android phone here. If I go to the Play Store and we search for Smart Life, that's the app we're after. If you haven't got it installed, install it, register an account on there and then sign in. Once you've signed in, this is what you'll be presented with. I've obviously got a number of different items in here. Now to add this one in, if I click on the plus and we go to lighting and lighting Wi-Fi. Now we need to ensure there's an indicator flashing on the light itself. So if I take the power plug here, plug it in at a point I've got at the side. Now you can see it's very bright. So if I turn it off, turn it on a few times, it's not flashing. But if I do this, it should start flashing away. There you go, it's flashing away now. So I can click confirm indicator rapidly blink. Next, I need to enter my Wi-Fi password. If you haven't got it entered in, then enter it in. Otherwise, my one's cached because I've already used this app. And just to highlight, this only works on 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi. It doesn't work on five gigahertz. So if I click confirm now, and let's give it a moment to connect. And there you go, it's connected. So it's appeared as a smart light. If I click done, and there you go. Now, if I come out for a moment, just to show, it shows up as smart light. If I click there, turns off, so it's a shortcut to turn it on and off. Going in there now, let me go through the options you have available. So clicking in the corner there, you've got the name of the device and you can rename it if you wanted to and change the icon as well. Next, you've got device information. This will be information like IP address and MAC address details for the device. Then you've got tap to run and automation. This is any automation you've set up for the device. Going back, then you've got third party control. So this is all the third party controls it works with. So only four listed here at the moment. Then offline notification. This will notify you if the device goes offline on the network. Coming down, then you've got share device. You can share the device with other people. Then you've got create group. You can group multiple devices together. So 
Obviously there's two of these floodlights, I can group both of them. Next you've got FAQ and feedback, followed by check device network, check for firmware update, remove device and restore factory defaults. And that's all you have available there, coming back from there. Then coming down you can see white, color and scene. Now with the white one, let's try that out. This doesn't do anything pressing on there, adjusting it. You can turn it to a warm color, turn it back to a cool color, turn down the brightness. As you can see, very easy to control. Now coming over to color, you can actually change the color now. The option here you have is brightness and just below that is saturation. So this is the color saturation on there. So you can take the color out of there. So make it lighter and then bring it to the maximum like so. There you go, very bright, I have to admit. Coming back gives you an idea, different colors that can be represented by it. Again, let me take the brightness down so it gives a clearer indicator. Not sure how much justice the camera is giving it, but color representation does look good. Now I've got the brightness down, I can look directly at it and see it does look good. Now, next we've got scene. So these are predefined scenes. So you've got night at the moment. Then you've got read, working, leisure, soft, colorful, dazzling, and gorgeous. Let's go back just to white and take down the brightness. Next, you've got left time. If I click on that. So you can set a timer to leave it on for a certain period of time and just automatically turn off. Coming back, then you've got schedule. Clicking on that, you can set a timer for these. So if I now click on that, you can see the time. Set the time you want it to perform an action. Then repeat, you can have it coming on on certain days. And then note, you can add a note with this. Doesn't really do anything, it's just a reference point for yourself. Notification, so you can be notified when that action is performed and then the action to do. So turn on or turn off. Coming back from there, and then finally in the middle, you've got an off button. If I click there, it turns it off. So as you've seen, very simple to set up and configure. And options wise, nothing complex, very simple to customize it to your needs. And I like the fact it's got a shortcut up here where you can quickly turn it on and off if you wanted to. Next, let me turn off my Wi-Fi. Here you go, it's off, and now it's connected to 4G. And now, if I click on the smart light, I can control it remotely. So it's just turned off, turn it back on again, and same functionality is available. We change the colors, change the white levels on there and the brightness as well. So you can remotely control it as well. So if you're out and about and you wanted to turn on the floodlights on a certain area, you could easily do that. So great functionality and no ports to open on your router or perform any sort of additional action to get it working. Next, let me show how to set up this device to work with both the Google Home and the Amazon Alexa. So I've got my devices just below here. On my Android phone, you can see the Home app. So this is for the Google Home. So if I click on that, and let's have a go at that one initially. Click here in the corner, Assistant Settings, Assistant, and Home Control. Now, if I click the plus, you can see the linked services. So you can see the fact that Smart Life is already linked. So if it isn't linked, you just search for it via here, the search. So you type in Smart Life. Once you've found it, it'll prompt for the username and password you use for the Smart Life app. Enter those details in, and then the service will link in with the Google Home. It's as simple as that. Now coming back here, if I scroll down, you can just see their floodlight. So I've renamed this to floodlight, and from here, from the shortcut, if I press off, turns off, turns on, click on it, you can see the brightness level, I can change that. It's gone to maximum, let's take it down again. Color, I can change the color as well to predefined colors they have. just to show what's possible. And that's it. Now coming back from there, you can add to a room you have and clicking in settings, you can see the name and rename it to something else if you wanted to. Also, it highlights that 
it's linked with the Smart Life app and you can unlink it if you wanted to. Now coming back from there, again you've got a button there to turn it off, turn it on. And now if I unmute my Google Home, the microphone is back on. I can say, turn off floodlight. Okay, turning the floodlight off. Turn on floodlight. Sure, turning the floodlight on. Increase floodlight brightness to 50%. Okay, setting the floodlight brightness to 50%. Change floodlight color to red. Okay, changing the floodlight to red. There you go, as simple as that to link up and use via the Google Home. Next, let me show how to set up this device to work with the Amazon Alexa. So I've got the Alexa app here on my Android phone. If I click on that, click in the corner, skills and games, and we want to search for Smart Life. The skill's just there. If I click on it, mine's currently enabled. If your one isn't, then enable it. Same thing as with the Google Home, it'll ask for your credentials. Once the credentials have been entered in, you click OK to that, then it'll proceed with linking in the skill with the Alexa. Now, if I go to devices, you go to lights, you can see floodlight just there. So there's a shortcut to turn it off and on. So it's turned it off, turn it on. If I now go in there, you can see the brightness level is on minimum. And yeah, I can increase it on there, put it back down again. I can change the color. It's a very similar functionality you'd get on the Google Home as well. And as you can see, very easy to navigate around and use. Okay, coming back, got settings, so you can rename the name of it. If you wanted to call it something else, shows it's linked to Smart Life and the fact it's enabled. You can also delete it as well in the corner. And that's it. So now, if I unmute my Amazon Alexa, I can say, Change floodlight color to red. Okay. There you go. As simple as that to get configured with the Amazon Alexa. So very simple to get set up there as well. So the next thing to show is I've set up the second LED floodlight and I've renamed both of them now. So as you look on the app, you can see garden floodlight one and garden floodlight two. Now I can click the shortcut just to show and it should turn on. So each one can be controlled. Now, if I go into one of them, go to edit settings, and we go to create group, and we create the group with both the floodlights, click save, and we'll call this garden floodlight group, save that, and that's what you're presented with. Going back from there, this is what the icon shows, and you can see the name of it there, and just dimly shows there's two items in there, if I click it from here, obviously they're on at the moment. If I click there again, they both turn off and you can see the other icons have turned off as well. Going in there now, we'll turn it on and there you go. Both have turned on at the same time. I can change the color at the same time as well. As you can see, go to color, to the RGB side of things, I can change the brightness on there. Saturation can be changed at the same time too. And then scene, this is a predefined scenes. You can go to these, get it doing different changes in the background. And let's go back to white and ensure the brightness is right down. Come into color and there you go. So excellent bit of functionality. So you could have multiples of these working in parallel at the same time. Now looking at the bottom, you've got schedule. So you can set a timer for both of these to come on at the same time. So showing here, pick the day, put a note against it if you wanted to, and then the action you want performed. So there you go. Excellent bit of functionality here. You can group multiple floodlights together and get them performing actions in conjunction at the same time. So my existing floodlight runs off this spur coming off the socket. I didn't do this, this has always been like this, and isolates it off. So to further isolate it, I'm just gonna remove the fuse here, and that'll ensure there's no connection there. So there we have it, the fuse is completely out. So here are my two existing floodlights. 
one's there and the other one's over here coming up close you can see the junction box there so let me open that up so there we go there's a connector block there cables here go into the floodlight just to show so I just need to unscrew those and then screw in the new one and then we'll just connect up to the connector block with the same colors going to the same location obviously the earth on this is yellow and green the other one will just be green so loosening the gland here will give me enough leeway to pull the wire out what I'll do, I'll take this out, just give me a bit more space with this. You can see, just held in position like this. So I can just pull that out now. So I've removed the floodlight, taken the two screws out, disconnected it from the junction here. Now I can cut the cable on the other one to the same length and just place into position. Just to show the difference in size between the new and the old, old one's much more bulkier, nice and slim design on the new one, very compact. So the floodlight's wired up now, as you can see, in position. And I'll just put the cover back on, which is just up here, and we'll just tighten that up next. There you go now, both floodlights are on. Show the other side as well. Okay, so the fuse is back into place on the switch for the lights, so we should be ready to test this out. There we have it. One's connected up and working. And if we come to the other one, that's working too. So excellent, that's quite easy to install. Okay, so you've seen the unboxing and setup of these smart LED floodlights. Very simple to set up and configure and great that it works with the Smart Life app. So there you go, hope it's helped anyone thinking of purchasing these. Details are in the description below. Thanks for viewing and don't forget to like, comment and subscribe.